Welcome back to the vehicle series in learning to code with Multi Theft Auto. In this episode, we're going to continue working on our vehicles resource by allowing players to delete vehicles. We're going to learn how to delete something from the database and how to remove an element from the server. In the last episode, we came up with some admin functionality so that an administrator of a server could create vehicles, fix them, and go to the, get those vehicles brought to their position. In this episode, we're going to expand that admin functionality by a step by allowing players to delete a vehicle. What we want to be able to do is type in slash delete V and vehicle's ID. So if we were going to delete this Mesa that I just created, we would type delete V12 and that vehicle would be deleted from the server and never to be seen again. So first things first, let's just jump over to our DB browser and uh, let's open up the database in uh, server mods, deathmatch, uh, databases, global, global.db. And uh, let's just browse the vehicles table. So here we have 12 different vehicles with an ID from one to 12, and uh, we're storing what the vehicle is and its position. So we want to remove this record from the database when we delete the vehicle, and we want to remove the database, the the vehicle element from the actual server. So let's jump into the code and see what that might look like. So here in our vehicles slash admin file, we're going to add a new command handler called delete vehicle. And we'll add some aliases to that like we have before. And we are going to then accept a closure of with the player, the command, and a vehicle ID. As usual, first things first, we are going to, um, let me just scroll that up a little bit. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, check if they have provided a vehicle ID. And if they have not, then tell them the syntax of the command requires a vehicle ID. If they have provided a vehicle ID, then we want to um, get the vehicle from its ID. Which if you remember from the previous episode, that is a, a function that we've already created in our utils file and can make use of again here. So we'll go get vehicle from ID, vehicle ID. If we did not find a vehicle, then that vehicle doesn't exist in our server. So we will output chat box an error telling the user that that vehicle doesn't exist. Now that we know we have the vehicle, what we need to do is we need to run a database query to remove the vehicle from the database, and then we need to destroy that element from our actual server. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, first get our database connection. Uh, you can see if we come up to our create vehicle command that we uh, call the database resource and then call the get connection function that was exported on that resource. And we're just going to run a DB exec uh, on that database. Um, we want to delete a record from the uh, vehicles table where the ID is equal to the vehicle ID binding that we're going to create right here. So this tells the uh, database to remove that vehicle from its record so that when we restart the server, the vehicle doesn't spawn back into our server. The next thing we need to do is destroy element, uh, the vehicle that is existing. So by calling destroy element with any sort of element inside of it, you can remove that element from the server. So whether it's on the client side and you're trying to destroy a GUI element or it's here on the server side and we're trying to actually destroy a vehicle element that exists, this is multi theft, ah, multi -theft auto's way of allowing you to delete things. And finally, what we're gonna do is output chat box, a message 
to the user that that vehicle has been successfully deleted. And so that should be it. So let's um, go ahead and just save that and we will restart vehicles and we should be able to Dell V12 and no such vehicle exists with that ID. Interesting. Ah, I made the exact same mistake that I made in the last episode. I need to pass a number representation of vehicle ID into this command and Dell V12. Now that vehicle is deleted. And um, if we restart vehicles, we can see that the vehicle doesn't come back because it no longer exists in the database. And just to show that more distinctly, if I refresh this, so there's vehicle ID 12 there. If I refresh this database, vehicle ID 12 is completely gone from our database. Now we were able to delete vehicle ID 12 because I had just created it and I knew the ID, but we need a way to be able to tell the ID of other vehicles so that we can delete them as well. So what we want to be able to do, jumping back over to our code, is create a new command called, um, I believe in the Valhalla code base, it's called this car, um, get vehicle ID, something like that. We could, we'll, we'll allow both. So we're going to get the occupied vehicle of this player. So the, the vehicle that they're in, um, if they're not in a vehicle, then we will let them know that. With a little error message. However, if they are in a vehicle, we will get the vehicle ID by grabbing it from the element data which is what we set on the vehicle when we uh, create it. Um, you can see that happening up here in the create vehicle command. Once we've created the vehicle and we have its ID from the database, we uh, set that ID onto the vehicle element data so that we can use it for things like this. So we will uh, get element data vehicle ID and we will then output chat box give the player a little message telling them what the ID is. Make that white and uh, let's give that a try. So let's hop into this Sentinel here. And if we do this car, we get the ID of this Sentinel is 11. So we can then Del V 11 and that vehicle is deleted. So we know it's the right ID. So there you have it. We now have the functionality to find a vehicle's ID by just hopping in it and calling this car and then typing delete vehicle and being able to delete a vehicle with any ID that we specify. In the next episode, we're gonna continue this vehicle's resource again by storing the color of a vehicle when we create it and having that color come back after we restart the resource.